Oh my god. No! God! No! Finally, I'm done. Wait, hold up. Is that your final build for your chassis? Yeah, it is. Isn't it great? I'm sorry to break it to you, buddy, but that build quality is not getting you far. Enough. Yeah. Huh, I see no bearings. And you're using cap nuts for your final build? Wait, and there's no consistency in sizing for your C channels and axles. Ow, is this sharp metal? Is my chassis that bad? I thought I did a pretty good job building. Well, at least you tried. I'll tell you what, allow me to guide you through some useful building techniques and habits that you'll find useful in robotics. You do that for me? Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. C-channel is the most basic part in VEX Robotics. It is used for building the frames of subsystems on your robot. There are two types of C-channel. Aluminum and steel. Aluminum is the standard for competitive VEX robots. A robot built with aluminum is lighter, which reduces the strain on motors. Steel C-channel is heavier than aluminum, but it is much stronger and less malleable as the material is denser. Both aluminum and steel C-channel come in two different lengths out of the box. 25 holes and 35 holes, which is also known as a full length. Avoid cutting down C-channel when possible. After it is cut off, you cannot simply glue the metal back on. Before you decide to cut a piece of C-channel, make sure you have a clear plan including a design drawing with measurements or a CAD model. Then, check the shared storage area in your shop to see if there is the part you are looking for sitting around already. After checking around the shop and you weren't able to find the desired piece, you can now consider cutting down a piece of C-channel. When securing a piece of C-channel in a vise to cut, make sure the C-channel is mounted on the correct orientation so you don't accidentally bend it. After cutting, file down the sharp edges of the metal. Failing to do this creates a safety hazard for you, your team, and anyone who decides to inspect your robot. And remember to mount your C-channel with nylocks. Cap nuts can easily get loose and should be only used for prototyping. Ensure that the axle that you're using has the appropriate length to avoid it from protruding out too much. Before cutting an axle to the desired size, first ensure that you have a clear and set plan of what you're building. This prevents you from making any unnecessary cuts or scrapping the entire piece because it was cut too short. Like C-channel and other metal parts, Make sure to file down any sharp edges and corners after cutting. Make sure to lock and keep your axles in place with shaft collars. Routinely check that your shaft collars are tightened before use. You don't want any axles to fall out during a match. And make sure that they are tightened on the flat side of the axle. Ensure to use bearings whenever an axle is present. Not using bearings can cause axles to grind down the holes of C-channel over time and the increased friction can damage your motors. When placing an axle between two pieces of metal, make sure to use two bearings, one on each side, for better stability of the axle. Remember to use spacers on axles. It helps with the positioning of parts and prevents metal and metal contact. When using spacers, make sure you don't just use only one specific size. Take advantage of all the available sizes of spacers to find the right combination. Aside from VEX parts, the most important tip of all 
is don't be afraid to ask for help. Senior students can share with you their own tips and tricks. Each team has their own robot, but we are all part of the same community. Very insightful. The flaws of my robot are very apparent now. So, now that you know how to fix your chassis, don't make the same mistakes again. Understood. I'll fix my problems right away. Alright, I'm done. Let's take it for a spin. Because he's not programmed right. 